Okay, in the last video, <clears throat> we programmed the first setup. In this video, we want to look at the steps that we would take for the second setup, which would be the other side. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to use this surface on the other side so I can use the same 3D toolpath. So I'm going to mirror that surface so that it's I can use it on the other side. So we'll choose OK and then cancel. As far as any other geometry preparation, uh, not really, not really necessary. So when we flip the part, we have to just decide which way we're going to flip it, whether we're going to flip it this way or whether we're going to flip it this way. Whichever way we flip it, um, we just want to flip it and then set a new zero. So in this case, I'm going to flip it over this way. Okay. So this is going to be the side that I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to add an additional setup and then I'm going to edit my uh, zero position. Now my zero position could be a number of different places. I've created these two pinholes so I can pin the part to a subplate so I know exactly where it's positioned and uh, the stock that we're starting with, let's say it's a known stock shape so I'm just going to choose this, the same origin position as I did in the other one which would be this bottom left hand corner. The only thing I need to do is flip my Y so I have the Y going in the right direction. Okay, so now we have one set up in this corner and one set up in this corner. From here, what I want to do is machine this top surface. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my three axis routine and then I'm going to paste it and I'll select uh, my surface here. The only thing that I have to change, oh, no, we look good. So let's go ahead and compute that. All right, so that will give us our three axis routine to put the taper on the, the part. The next thing that I want to do, let me turn off uh, some of this geometry here. Let me um, blank this tool path out. Let's move, uh, let's move this surface over to its own layer. Go back to the solid. Okay, so now when we're looking in here, you know, we want to come in and, and cut out this slot here. Uh, let me, uh, let me, when I unstitched the model, it ended up on the wireframe layer. So let me select all the, the surfaces and move them back over to their layer. So I'm go back to, to the solid layer. That's fine. Okay, so when we look in here, we have this uh, this slot profile now again um, you know there's a couple of different ways that we can approach this let's measure this so we can figure out what the radius is oh eight nine six all right so let's come in here and we're gonna do a two axis select geometry we're gonna select uh, this edge to this outside edge here so that gives me my my profile that I want to work with all right as far as my bottom I'm gonna pick my bottom so I'll grab my solid and then I want to pick up this edge here so it can measure what my bottom is for me uh, we're gonna do a rough routine tool size is gonna be Let's do 125, zero. Okay, leads, we want parallel and compute. Okay, so now this will give me the tool path. This is gonna come in here. It's gonna come, come down and it's gonna come in and profile that. I may or may not, I, I don't know what material we're cutting with, so I may not want that to take it uh, all in one pass. So we're going to edit this and we'll say multiple steps and recompute. Okay. So that gives me the profile for the slot. Let's go ahead and uh, run this through the simulation. All right. So we have our ball mill running our profile. We're profiling our our dowel holes or our pins for our setup and then we're cutting around the outside of the part 
All right, now we flip over and we're cutting on the other side. And then now we're cutting our slot. So that's, uh, that's where we're at at this point. Um, you know, we need to do this uh, T cutter to come in there and get the under undercut. But really what I'm kind of feeling is this outside profile that we have on the first setup. We really, uh, we really don't need that. I'm thinking we don't need that. So let's go ahead and, um, you know, let's just, uh, instead of getting rid of it, let's just go to it and say post yes, no, and turn it off. So that way uh, it's still there if we change our mind, but uh, it's not being posted in the routine. All right, so we have this, um, we have this uh, shape, this profile. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's bring the, the solid back up. All right, I'm going to create a, another layer, a construction layer. Now, I usually use layers to turn things on or off, but if you don't want to create a layer, you can go to blank, and I'm just going to blank this surface and this surface out. So I'm hiding them, but I didn't go through the steps of creating a layer. Okay, and then uh, this wireframe, I'm going to turn the wireframe off, and this other construction geometry, I'm going to turn that off as well. So I need to come in here. I want to measure this. I need to get some information about it. So I'm going to extract edges for this face here. Oops, not that face. Uh, utility extract edges single for this face here. All right, and then let me turn the other stuff off. So now I want to measure between this line and this line, and that tells me the distance. Um, we're going to need this information for the tooling we're going to use. And uh, I also want to measure between here and here. So we'll do measure, uh, oops, sorry, wrong one. Measure two entities from here to here. And this is 2185. All right, so now, now that we have this information, we'll go back into our cam tree. And what we're going to want to do is a two axis routine. We're going to select our geometry. I'm going to bring our solid back up and I'm going to grab this uh, bottom, these bottom edges here, okay, for this, uh, this undercut. So we're going to grab those edges. Next, pick bottom. We're going to pick that off the model. Okay, so we got that. We're going to do a profile rough. That's fine. Now when we go to our tool, we're going to go to our tool crib, T cutter. We don't have a T cutter. We're going to grab one from the tool library. So I'm going to grab this one here. And that's fine. The diameter we're going to use is going to be uh, 125. And the height is going to be uh, 0.0413. And uh, Shaft is going to be all right, so that should work. Standard leads, we're going to do parallel, parallel, and compute. All right, so this is cutting on the wrong side. What we're going to do is just reverse this direction and recompute, and that gives us our T cutter to come in there and to cut that uh, that undercut. So now we did the 3D rough. We did the down holes, then we did the 3D rough, then the slot, then the um, then the uh, <clears throat> the profile. But see, you know, the the slot we can kind of come in and plunge, but this uh, T cutter we can't plunge. So I'm actually going to extend this lead out a little bit further. Let's make it inch and a half. Because really what I want that to do is to start off the part and come in. I don't know if that's the most productive way to do that, but uh, we'll look at that for now. And then the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to profile around the part in this setup. So I'm going to copy this feature and I'm going to paste it into this setup. And then reselect. I'm going to right click on this edge and choose constant Z. All right, we don't. Uh, that didn't work. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. Oh, it's because the surfaces are unstitched. So 
Let me turn that off and select that shape there. Modify my start position and then recompute. This time I really want to, uh, I want this one to go all the way through. So we're gonna say top of job is a uh, quarter inch, bottom of job is zero. And then when I do my parameters, I'm gonna do multiple Go back up to our feature. Sorry, this is uh, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then uh, multiple steps. And uh, I want to leave an onion skin, so let's zero that. We're going to go to finish, and we're going to make this um, define depths. We'll do it in uh, point two, point two. Uh, Point 0.1, uh, 0.123, all right, that looks good. Compute that, all right, so that should give us two, two passes and then a, a skin on the bottom. All right, so now let's run this through the simulation and see what's going on. have our 3D tool tool path for the taper and then we profile our dowel holes from here we flip the part over we do our 3D profile for the taper we cut the slot uh, we did the T cutter for our undercut and now we're profiling around the part. The undercut worked, but uh, as far as just having the tool start off the side, that uh, that did not work. So, and this is doing our, our onion skin on the bottom. Okay, so what I think I wanna do here, I'm not positive, but let's go ahead and uh, edit this lead. Uh, let me see here. This one here. Let's edit this lead to 1.5. All right, so that way we have both of them starting off the edge of the part. We'll run it through a simulation again. All right, I kind of want to jump through my operations here to uh, the end so I can see see what's going on so let's go to this one here all right so now this is gonna profile profile and then now it has the clearance for the T cutter and then we can profile around the part now again the starting stock that you use I mean there's a bunch of different options here for as far as how you can handle this I think I'm actually cutting through with my uh, my uh, uh, onion skin pass because it tapers so I'd have to address that but uh, again this is uh, just some of the workflow everything that I've done here you could do with our mill standard on the next video I'm going to show uh, some of the options that we have in our mill pro and uh, a little bit different workflow as far as how we're going to attack this part and how we're going to hold the part so uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.